I think of you when I drink tea. The berries your mam would post to you, de-boxed, stowed in Ziploc bags inside a padded envelope. You know, you can get them here. They have them in Marsons, in the Irish section. The berries is next to the coconut macados and the two litre bottles of Cydona that no one ever buys. But when it came to your mam's berries, you were like a blinkered horse. I think of you when I eat crisps, potatoes in your bed, crunch, crunch, dusty and delicious, the lick of furry teeth, your idea, always. You'd feign a do not get potatoes on my bed sheets, but you loved it really. I think of you on Paddy's day, 17th of the third, our stars crossed and you exploded into my heart. Trafalgar Square, London's Irish loose on the streets, a scorcher of a day, ungreen, excuthan, a glucka. I tumbled into you in heaving crowds, you clad in green and red with sunburn. The weather is mad, isn't it? It's like Spain. I marveled at your peeling nose. And just like that, our love was born, the day the snakes were driven out. What on earth are you wearing? You asked me later as we rattled south on the northern line back to yours in Clapham. You eyed my Irish dancing get up, my perfect perm. I flicked my wig and danced for you. Not the dance you were expecting, maybe. I had never learned to jig or reel, but you enjoyed it nonetheless. You laughed, a laugh I'd come to love, the sound of it like a present. I was new to London then, when with my first paycheck, a Soho fortune teller mined her crystal ball for me, scoured her Barry's tea leaves in search of her soul. She conjured many things. I see a lot of men, she reported. Exploits in foreign tongues, but there was no sign of you. And yet, against all odds, in you swanned, my sunburnt Kerry man with soft hands and kindness the size of a small country. You would have walked over hot coals. You would have laid down and died for the GAA, which made me roll my eyes. But I knew you'd do the same for me. And I loved the bones of you. A quantity surveyor, you would have preferred to be out doing honest work, pouring concrete or laying blocks, but instead suited and booted you were a stunning corporate ant. Begrudgingly, you took the tube to work. I'd go with you sometimes in the mornings for the crack, lean up against you in the crush. As we hurtled towards the city, I'd whisper, see, the tube is flipping magic. And the odd time, if you were lucky, I would dance for you. When at Christmas I announced I was staying put, you couldn't get your head around it. I wanted to explain that unlike you, I didn't have a family the size of a small parish baying for my return. Instead, I shrugged my shoulders, said I couldn't be arsed. You called me mad and left me to it. I drank your mother's Barry's tea, ate crisps alone in bed and counted down the days till your return. London became my home from home, the unofficial capital of Erin, sprawling, messy, Moorish, free. More loyal to me than any notion of Ireland had ever been. This baffled you. But this is England, you'd say. And I could hardly argue with that, although I did try. It's not though, it's London and it's brilliant. I don't know exactly what you were afraid of. Maybe future kids with English accents. London babies who'd cry, mummy. We never talked that far ahead, but your palm lines were crystal clear to me. Like a crinkled roadmap that led direct to home. Trasna na dunta, arash kunte kiri. But in the meantime, we had tea and crisps and sweat and skin. We danced. We drank, we cycled the canals till we knew London's arteries inside out and backwards. 
You taught me the rules of Gaelic football and how to worry less. In return, I gave you drag kings and poetry and dancing on the tube. A fair exchange, I think. You came to my shows, against your better judgment, sat down the back and on the left, like a sulky teenager at mass, one eye on the door at all times. But when I'd see you in the darkness, the shape of you, my stomach flipped and butterflied, like that first day I clapped eyes on you and your peeling nose. I was banned from attending your matches, I think we both knew I'd be a liability with my wolf whistle and my sketchy knowledge of free kicks. But one day, a few months in, I got the invite to meet the lads, the Kerry crew, in a pub in Stockwell after one of your games. Please wear something normal, you implored. I pre-matched kissed you, wished you luck and told you where to go. I chose my Paddy's Day attire, my Irish dancing get-up, my perfect perm. I flicked my wig as I sauntered in to meet the lads. You're an Irish dancer? Asked one of them. I smiled, sort of. You clocked me then across the bar, your face froze at the sight of me and I wondered had I finally gone too far. But then you split into a smile. You laughed and laughed the laugh I'd come to love, the sound of it, like a present. And it was then I knew I had you in the palm of my heart. You didn't ask me to move home. I suppose we both knew it was never on my cards. So when you announced the hills were calling for real this time, I said little, kissed your soft hands, went with you on the Piccadilly line to Heathrow Airport. Too sad that day to dance for you. I think of you on Paddy's Day, clad in green and red with sunburn. Do you have kids now? Their accents thick with home, knee high just with a football in their hand already doing the kingdom proud. I think of you on Paddy's Day. Do you wear a suit to work still as you quantity survey the lakes of Killarney? I think of you on Paddy's Day. Do you miss it ever? London, the crusty theatres I dragged you to, the crisps in bed, the Barry's tea you could have bought in Morrison's. I think of you on Paddy's Day, hurtling home on the tube, I spot a lad who looks like you. I double take, my heart explodes. I'm ready always in my perfect perm to dance for you.